Hey everybody, what up? Um, so in this video, I just want to take a moment and uh, I'm going to talk about just hardware specs, I guess, or just uh, simply the software and the hardware that I've actually used uh, for several years now. The hardware is somewhat um, updated, but for most of my YouTube videos over the last like several years, I'm just going to go ahead and explain like what it is that I use actually for recording, for doing the videos that I've done, the tutorials, and also just simply doing my own programming, creating CodeHawk and everything else that I do. Um, so first things first, I, I'm using a Windows 11 machine and a lot of people ask, why do, why do I use Windows? And, and the main reason is because, um, you know, I want to target the most when I'm building something. So like if I'm building software, I want it to work on Windows. Uh, if you're in, into like video gaming or in my opinion, like creating games, whether it's Unreal Engine or Unity Engine, most of that you're going to be targeting Windows machines. So it's like, I'm just kind of used to it. Plus, I've been using Windows, dude, since DOS back in the 80s. And, and um, like, I remember when Windows 3.1 was, like, a new thing, and I used to use DOS to actually fire it up. Uh, so I used to hate Windows all the way back to, like, Windows 3.1, which is one of their best products. Uh, but I've, I'm so used to it. I've been using it forever. So the point being, though, I'm also very familiar with Ubuntu and, like, Bash and, and logging in, SSHing uh, into my servers and managing things there, and then also from a Mac perspective. Uh, so Unix based systems as well. So I, I use all three operating systems is my point. And like, um, while windows has its downsides, there's definitely some upsides as well, including like how my screen capturing, uh, software works. So all that said, um, the main software that I've actually used to create videos is Camtasia. And a lot of people actually, you know, bust on this. It, it, the thing is like, I've all, it's one of those things where I've been using it so long that I can edit very quickly in it and um, it's just like simple to use. So yeah, it crashes a lot and um, and it doesn't handle 4K very well, uh, if at all. So like, um, you know, it, it's, it's definitely, it seems like it's always like a, a step behind something like OBS, uh, which is open source and free. And, uh, but the editing skills, I think, or editing capabilities are just so much better for what I, what it is that I try to do day to day. So I mostly stick with Camtasia for screen capturing, including if I have like a, a 4k camera. So I have a 4k Logitech webcam and I'll occasionally use that and like stream those videos at the same time. Uh, and I can do that within Camtasia, but usually it, it sort of fails on that. So I, I felt, I found that if I'm going to be doing 4k video, which I don't do very often because it's a pain in the ass, uh, for actually processing everything and having two streams, like one capturing your, your, your screen and then another one capturing your webcam. I found that like OBS is honestly the best software when it comes to something like that. And it's also free. So if you're able to make open broadcaster system work for you in a way that, um, allows you to do screen capture, I mean, I definitely, you know, more power to you. Uh, so when it comes to 4k video though, Camtasia doesn't do it. So in that case, like I use Premiere Pro and Adobe products, I've been using them for a very long time as well. So I pay for the, uh, the monthly subscription. It's like $54 a month and you get all of the Adobe products, which I feel like is a fairly good deal. Um, so yeah, Camtasia though, I, I've honestly, I've like, I've made so much money with, with Camtasia. Uh, it's unbelievable compared to what the actual software costs. So getting into some of the hardware stuff, like I just use like basic Bose speakers. I think they're like 199 when I bought them in the store, but it's, um, so I got decent speaker quality if I want to actually play sound. Um, I have two monitors. So one of them is, uh, the more expensive one, this Acer Nitro thing, which I would not actually recommend it, uh, at this price point. Where's the price? 599. I, I got it on sale actually at micro center for like, I think it was 399. Um, but you can see was a thousand ninety nine. Like that doesn't make any sense to me. Like it's definitely not a thousand dollar monitor, uh, but it does do 4k. So if you have like 4k, um, if your eyes are on 4k, whether it's for gaming or VR or any of that other stuff, then like, um, you need a 4k monitor and those are pretty expensive. Um, so my second monitor though, is actually like a, a smaller, um, Acer as well. And it's just a normal like 1080p, I believe. Uh, I don't even know the specs on it, but it's kind of older and it's not as large as the other one. So I really need to upgrade my monitor. So I always use two monitors. 
that's something that everybody should always be doing. It doesn't matter what sort of software uh, or anything that you're doing IT, you should have two monitors. Every computer supports it. Um, so all that said, uh, going into like the audio, I use a uh, basic Scarlet. So I use like actual US um, or, you know, mic plugins and um, you have to download software in order for this to work. But when I first got this, I, um, yeah, I plugged in my mic and by the way, my mic is um, the mic that everybody uses on YouTube, this SM7B, you can get it like Guitar Center. Everybody's using this mic. It doesn't matter if you're making millions on YouTube or if you like have like 10 subscribers, like everybody is using this mic. My ad ad advice is like anybody that's trying to do a YouTube channel or something like that, you don't need this to start off with. I would just, I would wait until you have some sort of traction or make sure you actually like doing videos and then um, honestly, this, this mic is worth its weight in gold, though everybody gets it. Um, so in order to use that mic, though, I plug it into this Focusrite Scarlett, and um, this should also have a USB 3.0 that goes into your computer. And even from there, you download um, drivers and, and software to actually run your, your Focusrite. But then when I found, what I found is that I could turn the gain all the way up on this thing, and the audio was still jacked up. So... What I ended up having to buy was this cloud lifter. Um, so this is a, um, a like a, a mic boom or like a, a, a boost. The, the it's a, called a preamp. Basically, it sits on the floor, and my my foot. I have a mic cord that goes from the focus right to the cloud lifter on the floor, and then from the cloud lifter into the Shure Shure SM, uh, SMB7 microphone. Uh, and that's how I've actually been doing audio. Um, and I know that my audio is actually jacked up some, from time to time. And the main reason is because Windows likes to record on like um, stereo, like two channel, red, whatever. Like you need to do one channel mono. So uh, the Focusrite has the ability to have two mics plugged into it. So if you have like somebody that's like a guest um, on, your, uh, on your podcast or something like that, then you would want a separate mic going to them and like it, it has that capability so that's one of the, the benefits of it as well even though I never use it for that sort of thing uh, so going back to some of this other stuff um, the disk drive is a two terabyte uh, SSD so I, I'd prefer to have more space like I actually run out uh, with two terabytes it's not very much when you're making like um, videos and you have a lot of like video games and you can run out of two terabyte pretty quickly so it would be nice to have like an additional like four terabyte uh just regular hard drive uh but the ssd two terabytes pretty decent for this uh, machine here the display adapter is the uh, g g4 or rtx 4080 um so i would say with the 4080 like I, it's not it's an impressive graphics card and it's really expensive like the, the price of graphics cards are through the roof and the reason why is like nvidia has head and shoulders like they're better than their competition so amd is not even close and no other company's close to nvidia um and it seems like though as these graphics cards come out like when i got the 4080 it's like the 4090 was out but the 4090 was nearly two thousand dollars just for the graphics card and um even this price point here is just not worth it uh, but if you look at something like I think it's like the 4070 Ti or something like that. It's a garbage card. It like it rivals the 3080 because um, it only has like 12 gigabytes of uh, virtual memory. So this one has 16 gigabytes, as you can see. Um, and anyway, it, it's definitely a great graphics card. It's um, it, it yeah, it's really good, but it's not worth the price in my opinion. So uh, the next thing here, you can see uh, th there's the focus right that I was talking about the Scarlet and um, keyboard. That yeah, so I don't actually I don't like the mechanical bullshit keyboards that make a bunch of noise uh, when you click on on them. In fact, when you're doing videos, I feel like you need more of a silent keyboard. I should have a much better keyboard, but I'm just using like a simple Razer. I think it was like forty dollars at a Walmart or something like that. Uh, a lot of people are really like particular about their keyboards and their mice and um, and I'm just using some simple razor products and uh, they're not the best but they're not the worst either we've already talked about the monitors like network adapters um, I think this is um, top of the line but I try I have a Verizon Fios so I get a thousand up thousand down totally worth the money it's only like eighty dollars a month and 
Um, I definitely get a thousand up, a thousand down, only if I'm plugged direct wire though. So it doesn't really matter how good uh, your your Wi-Fi is. Like you pretty much have a direct wire, or you want to have a direct wire if you're going to be doing uh, a lot of internet stuff, in my opinion. But it's it's a pain to also drag the wire through your house. So I know that, or drill holes and stuff like that. I've had to do that before. But um, one thing I noticed with Verizon FiOS is that they sometimes will. Uh, like they they will throttle your traffic so i sometimes have to like re you know reset the the router or have to unplug the ethernet from the wall or the coaxial from the wall and um and then it usually works better from there but verizon is um i, I just don't trust them i mean there's been times that it's like why is my, why am i getting like dial-up speeds you know what i mean when i'm supposed to have a thousand up and down so it is uh it happens sometimes all right, and then the processor is a uh, 13 generation i9. So you don't really need this either, in my opinion. I mean, like the i7 is still good. I mean, even if you had like an i5 or something, I think Intel is much better than AMD, but I guess that's uh, open to uh, discussion or, or interpretation or any, anything. But I, I do believe when it comes to like specs and stuff like that, that Intel has the advantage over AMD when it comes to a processor. So yeah, ultimately, I don't think you need um, you know top of the line hardware unless you're actually trying to do Bitcoin mining or virtual reality or video game development. Um, well, really, in 4K video these days. So if you're going to be doing 4K streaming, you, you really need upgraded rig. But um, I would think like even like the 3080 graphics cards are just just uh, good enough, and probably the i7. And uh, other than that, just let me know what your thoughts are. I'm curious uh, what, what you guys all use.